So how does attitude affect the outcome of a mediation? So picture this, you go into the mediation, it's a my way or the highway kind of attitude. You're going in like a bulldog, you're all prepared, you've got your documents in order, you've got your position in order in terms of what it is that you want to achieve in this mediation, and you've decided if the other person doesn't budge, too bad, so sad, I'm not gonna to agree to something, and I'm prepared to go to court. So the first question you should ask yourself is, if you're fully prepared to go to court and you're not really willing to bargain or negotiate, you're just going in there expecting that you're gonna get what you want or that's the end of the mediation, then you wanna really ask yourself if mediation is the right venue for you because if you're fully prepared to go to court and that's what you'd prefer, that might be the option for you. That would be a sad option because then you are forced to take whatever the judgment is from that judge of that day. You have no control over what the judgment is, as opposed to a mediation when you guys can come up with an agreement that makes sense for you. So let's assume that you are wanting to go through mediation, but you're still approaching this with an attitude of a bulldog and it's my way or the highway. It's really true about you attract the energy that you're giving out. So if you go in there all negative and angry, you're gonna attract that same energy from your ex-spouse. And so this bargaining or negotiating that you're going to do in the mediation is gonna be full of negativity. And you've already set the tone by walking in there with your back up and maybe anger on your face and the other person seeing it and so they're reacting in kind. They're now going to be angry and negative and maybe they're also gonna be closed to actually coming up with a solution that is flexible because of the way you might have approached them in the mediation. So you really want to think about how you're feeling, what's going on for you before you get to that mediation. You really want to think about how you can approach that person in a positive way with an open mind because maybe you have all these ideas of what you want but could it be that if you listen to them and really hear them, hear their position in the mediation, hear what it is that they actually want, is there a way that you could tweak what you want that also accommodates what they want and you still end up getting an agreement and you still both end up getting something that you can live with? Wouldn't that be a better way to do it than approaching it in a negative way and being completely closed-minded to what they may have to say? Maybe you would hear something in that mediation that you might not otherwise hear because your mind is open to it. You're open to hearing different alternatives, different scenarios, different ways of thinking. Maybe there's something out there that you haven't thought of, but because you let yourself be open to it, you're able to see that there is another way to deal with this negotiation where, again, both of you can come out the winner. So I also want you to think about a strategy where what if you pictured the conversation you're about to have in this mediation as if you were doing it 10 years from now? So 10 years from now, you've moved on with your life. You're in a better place. You're in a happier place. You're at peace because you've moved on and, you know, things are better for you. Could you imagine having that same discussion that you're about to have 10 years from now when the anger is hopefully dissipated, the negative emotions have hope, hopefully subsided and you can just talk from a place of peace, what would your position be then? How would you speak to your ex-spouse then? How would you approach them? What would your expectations be? What would be important to you 10 years from now? Sometimes when we're right in the moment and we're in the heat of the moment, we can't really see the big picture. We're so stuck in the anger that we're focusing on maybe the weeds as opposed to the big picture and it really hampers the the outcome of the mediation because we're we're too distracted by all the stuff but if you can picture yourself in that conversation 10 years from now from a place and speaking from a place of peace imagine what kind of an outcome you would have in that kind of a headspace now if you bring that headspace into today even though it is full of emotion but what you're doing is you're trying to put the emotion to the side and you're trying to have a dialogue with the other person that is only constructive, only focused on positivity, 
only focused on what is best for you and your children and your family, knowing that at the end of the day, I still have to parent with this person. We still have to get along. We still have to co-parent. We still have to cooperate and deal with each other on a regular basis because we have children. Imagine the difference in the outcome of that mediation because you approached the conversation from a place of peace. You approached it with an open mind. You were not on the attack. It doesn't mean you're going to back down in your position necessarily. What it means is you're approaching this dialogue in a place where you're, you are open to hearing what the other person has to say. You're open to hearing about what it is that is in their interest, why they need what they need, and maybe the two of you can find a solution where you each get what you need and yet you've accomplished a resolution from a place of, of, of peace and positivity. Wouldn't that be a great outcome for you and your mediation? I want you to think about that as you approach your mediation. Think about your headspace. Think about approaching it from a place of peace and pushing the negativity, negativity to the side just in that moment and see what a difference your attitude can make in your mediation. Have a great day.